guys. Welcome to this episode of Southbound Fishing. Today we're going to be talking about jig fishing. It's starting to cool down. It's been cool for a while now down here. Uh, it's pretty. It's winter now. It's December, so it's winter. Um, and everyone knows jigs work in the winter. They work all year round, but they really shine in the winter and in the spring. So that's what I'm going to talk about. Talk to you about today. Jig fishing. Got the all-terrain tackle. Jim Moyas football jig here. In PB and J, half ounce. It's my. Uh, I got these in from Tackle Warehouse. You guys saw the video probably. There's the jig. Really nice looking jig. I'll show you what I like to do. I always like to have. I ha always have my little tips and tricks with jigs. And I'll tackle. I like to change it up a little bit. And what I'll do is, if you can see, you see how it's totally. Uh, you see the skirt and how it transfers into that. Into that purple and brown. You can see where it has that PB&J. I like to rotate it. I don't like PB&J on this side, normal on this side. I like it, the PB&J to be up. So what I'm gonna do, the purple part to be up at least, I'm gonna just rotate the jig skirt collar and then just fluff it out, make sure everything's divided all nicely. Move it a little bit back around. And then you have the brown on the bottom, which is gonna be pretty much stuck on the bottom. And you have that purple and that uh, that tiger stripe print jig skirt right there, riding on the top. So that's just a little tip. Also, what I'll do with these, get a nice sharp pair of cutters, get the jig guard, and just cut a little diagonal cut right there, just so it's flat. That's pretty much all I'll do. Just helps a little bit. Um, I leave a good little bit of a tag in there. And um, one thing I really like to do with these jigs, helicopter up there. One thing I really like to do with these jigs, um, or really like what I like about these jigs is, I'm gonna show you right here. Instead of just a normal skirt collar, it actually has two O-rings right there. I'll get a close-up picture of them, but there's two O-rings that hold that skirt in place. It's just a good jig, you know. It's just a really good quality jig. So, I really like these jigs. And so, the trailers that I'll put on them, sometimes I'll put no trailer. It depends. If I'm fishing really clear water, I won't put a trailer. There's no need because the jig skirt attracts them and it's, it's just enough. Sometimes I'll do that. Most of the time I won't. Most of the time I'll put a trailer on. Um, punch buggy, that's a good trailer. My favorite right now, though, is the scuttle bug. I got a little, um, it's, a, uh, it's a fruit salad and a, a baby bass swirl on there. You can see it just works well with this jig. Has a little bit of contrast. I don't want something that's peanut butter and jelly. I don't want it to match perfectly with the jig. I want a little bit of contrast. I'm always looking for contrast. So basically what I'll do, just thread it all down so it's just hanging. And the scuttlebug's cool because the scuttlebug has, I, I take the legs off by the way. If you're gonna thread it on a jig tailor, normally I'd take the legs off because the legs will just entangle with the jig skirt. It just doesn't work well. The legs are just for detail, flipping, pitching, using it just as a straight craw. You can leave them on, it's no problem, but I take them off. As you can see, it has a long enough body, you line it up to where it's going to be, and that's just perfect. So there's no need for trimming, biting off half the body. And then all I'll do is just I'll bend that jig skirt up, catch it with my index finger, just like that. Sometimes you can do it with your thumb. And then just thread it on just dead center. Thread it right through the plastic. I know you guys can't exactly see what I'm doing. But I'm just threading it through right in the middle. A little bit farther and then just pop it out. As you can see right there and then push it as far up as you can get it. Just keep pushing it up. And there you go, there's your jig trailer. Let it fall down. Get the skirt all nice and evened out, and there's your jig. As you can see, it's not dead level. It has a little bit of an up curve, but that's because when that jig sits on the bottom, that craw is going to stand even almost vertical, because if you have it normal, the craw will just stand kind of kind of laying on the bottom, but if you have it at that angle, the craw will stand almost vertical. Those claws float up because the plastic saw that I use floats, uh, so those claws will float up. It's just a perfect little presentation. That's a, just a compact awesome little jig. So, 
when I get ready to fish this thing, I'll go through some techniques on how you fish it, where to fish it, how slow, how fast, what line, what reel, what rod, all that stuff. Stay tuned, guys. All right, guys, now we're gonna talk about how to fish these things. Uh, there's, there's several speeds. I don't just have one jig method. Uh, I just fish that all year round from summer to winter. I don't do that. I have several different methods for each season, each cover, all that kind of good stuff. So, first thing is we're going to start out of speed. Normally, jig fishing make a long cast or pitch to cover. So, we'll go over the edge of this cove right here. There it is. Let it sink to the bottom. It doesn't take long with a half ounce jig. And you're there. First thing first, tighten up your line, feel it. If you feel that line moving or ticking, you'll, you'll have that fish. Because sometimes fish will be hiding under that log, you cast to that log, as soon as it hits the bottom, that thing will come out and snag it. So, And then I just hop it. This is my mid-temperature, I guess you'd say. Late fall, early spring, that kind of stuff. When the air temperature is anywhere from 55 to 70, I'll be fishing this technique. Just hopping it. And what that's doing is, I'm lifting in my rod about four or five inches at a time. And that jig's going four or five inches. It's just hopping up, hopping down, hopping up, hopping down. It's not really just scooting through the dirt because if it was scooting through the dirt, if I wanted it to, I'd have a sideways presentation. i just do that kind of thing. And just uh, work it kind of like a fluke, you know, just to, and it would be dragging through the bottom, kicking it up. That's good sometimes, but I really like to hop and fall, hop and fall. Because sometimes bass will be on the bottom and that jig will be under all that stuff. It'll be under all those rocks, leaves, pine straw, what have you, that's under there. It'll be under there. They can't see it. They're looking for it. It pops up. It comes back down. They know where it is. The next time it pops up, they'll cram it. So that's one method. That works a lot when the fish are actually pretty active. As you can see, it has a little bit of stuff on it, but not much stuff at all. That's one method. That's mo that's my most common method because that those air temperatures are perfect for down here. I'm getting um, 55 degrees to 70 degrees a lot. So fall, spring, that's what I like to do. Summertime as well. If you're fishing up northern and it's uh, e even cooler in the summer and it's not as hot, it doesn't get up to the 90s and the hundreds here, like here it does. Um, you could you can succeed with that method as well. The next method is dead cold winter. Again, same cast. You let it sink to the bottom, that's what you do. It's boring, let me tell you, it's boring. That's it. One to two inch movements of the rod. Half the time the jig's not even moving, it's just shaking a little bit down there. Crawl it over the log, crawl it over the next rock, tighten up your slack. And just shake it. pull back and you feel it pretty solid, it means you're pretty pretty snugged up on a rock or a, a stump, a piece of cover, and then, because if, if it's just, if you can feel it given, there's no point. There's no point to pop it over, but if you can feel it on that stump or that log or, you know, um, you know, pile of leaves, whatever, it's down there. Like right now, it's pretty solid feeling right there. I, it's not moving past it, so I'll just pop it once and it just shoots it over there, gets it to the next part of the log. It's slow, let me tell you. It is, it's a slow presentation. That's all you do, though, is just, just shake it, almost like a drop shot. I've caught a lot of good fish in the, just the dead cold of winter doing that. Next presentation, probably my favorite, swimming. People say, oh, you have to have a swim jig to swim a jig. You don't. That's not true. People have been swimming. Swim jigs, they're, I think they're overrated. I think you don't really need a swim jig to swim a jig. I'm swimming with a football. I'm swimming with a swim jig, too, though. You need a trailer for this. You pretty much, you can't, This it doesn't work if you don't have a trailer. There's not enough resistance. And if you have a beaver or something like that, I don't re recommend those for swimming. I recommend something with movement. Pack a crawl, scuttlebug, these kind of things, with movement on the on the legs. It gives you some resistance, 
It gives you that flash, the action, something's moving in there instead of just something that's just dragging through the water like a jig. And all that is, is cast out, let it sink to the bottom. Sometimes you'll have pine straw or whatever stuck on your jig, so give it. Make sure there's not a fish on it, because sometimes if you pitch to it, there'll be a fish on it. One sharp pop, and just start reeling. Pop it over stuff, pop it under stuff, make it real fast, let it drop. Do a lot of stuff with this. It's a pretty cool technique. It's pretty much a swim jig, but you don't have to have a swim jig to do it. If fish are cruising, they'll sometimes come over and eat this. You can fish these things in grass, that's one of my favorite methods. Uh, throw it in the grass highways, the grass channels, and catch some fish doing that. That's my pretty much my cast and retrieval methods for jigs. Um, now I'm going to go into my flipping methods. So we'll get to that right now. I'm just going to pick up the camera and move it over so you can see this tree right here. And I'll show you what I do. I'm just going to pitch to it. Sometimes it'll get up in the tree. You can just pop it right out of there. When it's down there catch up really quick. Don't let there be any slack line as soon as it hits the water. And then just shake it. That's all you do is just shake it. Shake it, move it a little bit. That's my main flip. I'm not into I'm not in Okeechobee or Seminole, any of those big flipping lakes, so I'm not doing that. I'm not just flipping, feeling, reeling back up, flipping, feeling. Sometimes you have to entice the fish. If you can get over a log, sometimes that really works for a little twig. You can get that vertical presentation and just lift up a couple inches. There's some really weird stuff I like to do when I'm flipping. I'm not just one of those guys who just, again, I'm not, I don't just flip, reel back out. flip, reel back out. I'm not really, I don't really do that. I, I like to do weird stuff. Flip it, swim it, drop it, all that kind of, I fish it, I fish it stranger than a lot of other people do. Pitch back in there, pop it, swim it out. Always keep the handle. When you're, when you're flipping, when you're casting a jig, it's not as important to keep that hand, keep your reel, hand on the reel. I mean, if it's always important, but you know, you can feel, if you feel that fish move it, you could set the hook. But with flipping, if you See if I flip out to there. Get you out of the tree. Gosh. All up in the tree today. Say you flipped right there and you have slack and you don't have your reel. So eight pounder could pick it up right there. And as soon as you feel it, you got to reel back down. He could have already dropped it. So it's it's so flipping is so fast. So fish can pick up that bite so fast sometimes when you're flipping. So. That's really a key thing, is always keep your hand on the reel handle when you're flipping. You have to make sure to do that. Because you will lose fish that way. Losing fish sucks, so you do not want to lose fish. Because every fish that you lose could be a giant. The cover that I'm looking for, I'll go into that now. I fish pretty much, I'm not really, I always like to do things different than everyone else. Everyone else has, you know, standards for fishing that they go by. Uh, spinner baits on wood, that kind of thing. Frogs on moss, that kind of thing. I like to I like to switch it around, try new things, catch fish on different areas, on different baits that ha they really haven't seen before. So, but I'm not really like that on jigs. I found that this, the different stuff really doesn't work all that well. Mats, we got some mats out here. I'll show you. They're not grass mats. They're pine straw mats, but nevertheless, they're mats. I'll just go pitch out there, pitch to the edge. Something might be under that mat. Got him. Oh my god. Making the video. You gotta be kidding me. Sitting here making the video, wasn't paying attention to my fishing, and I had a fish on. I hope you guys saw that. That line was screaming out of there. It was probably like a one or two pound fish. But as you can see, mats work. Just making sure the camera angle was right on there. And of course, I just see that line just zinging. That was cool. See, mats work. <laughs>
Wish I could have caught that fish. That would have been way better, but it's all good. Wood cover is another good thing. That log right there. What I like to do on logs is... That was actually an awful cast for that log, but you get the picture. I'll cast to it, let it fall, just like I do a mat, and then either swim it out or, um, or hop it out, depending on the water temperature, of course. Other good stuff for jigs, that's the main stuff I like to fish, it's rocks and wood. Rocks, mats, logs, and wood. It's the main stuff we have down here. We don't have a lot of, we don't have a ton of grass. We do have grass in the summer, but normally we're not really hitting the grass hard. We don't have a lot of grass down here. So, um, rocks is a, is, it's a touchy subject. We don't have a ton of rocks, but when I, when I get into them, I do love them. Just the camera. But rocks really require a different fishing technique because wood and stuff you can always crawl over, but rocks sometimes your jig gets jammed in there and then you're just done. You gotta motor the boat over or walk over there depending if you're bank fishing or boat fishing and uh, and pop the jig out of there. Sometimes the, the football head will get lodged in there and, that, and it does suck because then your cast is ruined. If you have to if you have to get your boat over there and have to stick your rod in the water and try to jam the jig out of there, your fish is gone. You're not gonna you can't catch a fish out of that area because you just totally messed it up. So rocks, I really like. I I just really like a lighter jig. I don't like a heavy jig because I don't want it to get down in the rocks. I wouldn't be fishing a half ounce. I'll fish an eighth, you know, a small little finesse jig or maybe even a quarter, and just just trim just trim everything down in the rocks because if you have an ouncer, an ounce jig or a half ounce, it can suck down in there. Then you're done, of course. And um, and you don't want that at all. So wood and stuff, I may, my main jig is pretty much a half ounce. I'm pretty much going to fish in half ounce if it's mats, wood, stumps, logs, that kind of stuff. But rocks, I'll, I'll go back to. I use a Bass Patrol silicone football jig, and that's an eighth of an ounce, and it's just a small little jig. I don't put a trailer on it. In the rocks, it's not so much as a, as a big flipping thing. You don't need a big flipping bait with a craw, uh, all that. You just need a, a small little green pumpkin jig and you can get the job done. I'll even go to spinning tackle, 12 pound test fluorocarbon. And uh, that brings me into my rod, reel, and line specifications when I'm fishing a jig. On the line, it, it depends on, again, it depends on what I'm fishing. I really want to catch that fish. That sucked, I, I lost that guy. Um, but, but with the rod and reel, I'm mainly with jig fishing, unless it's pitching and flipping to mats, cover, all that stuff. If, unless it's serious punching, which I don't really consider jig fishing, I'll go. I'll I'll stick with a seven foot medium heavy. That's pretty much my all around rod. is seven foot medium heavy, and I'm, it's the Daiwa Air that I'm using. It's got a pretty soft tip, but it, as you can see, it has a lot of backbone, and that's what you want. You need backbone in a jig rod. Um, a lot of companies make special jig rods. I'm not one of those people who has a jig, a rod for a jerk bait, rod for a jig, rod for a spinner bait. I have. Uh, I pretty much carry three rods, so. This is my main jig rod, as you would call it, because it works for almost everything. It's a seven foot medium heavy. Reels, nothing special, 711 or 621, doesn't really matter. Pitching and flipping, I'll go with a 711. Normal jigging, I'll just go with a 611. You know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna catch less fish because you're using a 61 instead of a 71. Um, but line is a big deal. Line is the one thing I will not skimp on. I don't go, under 15 pound test when I'm fishing, you know, if again the rocks, it's a totally different situation for me. I'll go to spinning sometime. Uh, but wood and cover and stuff, I won't go below 15. I'm fishing 17 right now. This is 17 pound test copolymer. It's a moss green. It's sunline copolymer. It's really nice stuff. You can get your hands on it um, if you want. If you want to pay the price for it, do it. Uh, it's really good line. Again, I'm not going to skimp on the jig line because jig fish can be giants. So. I won't skip on that. And of course, you're always in the rocks, always in the stumps, the rocks, the woods, all that stuff. You'll get your get your line torn up if you don't use a good one. If you just go with some random, off-brand, eight-pound mono, you're not. It's just not going to cut it. Grass fishing, I'm going to go with braid, straight 50-pound braid to straight 20 to 25-pound fluorocarbon leader. If the rod is really dingy, I won't even mess with the leader. But most of the time, I'm going to throw a leader on it because. Braid's so sensitive, but it's so visible, and you can, those smart fish, they can see that line, they know what's up, so, 
you don't want to use braid in all situations. Most of the time I'm just going to be throwing the copolymer or the fluorocarbon. It just depends on what I have on the reel. They're basically interchangeable to me. Um, so that's my line specifications. Hope this video helped, guys. Go stick a pig on a jig this, this winter, guys. Thanks for watching.